Hello YouTube, my name is Zach, and I'm bringing to you the first episode in a 15 part series on the Evil Within 1. In this series, we're going to be doing the Crossbow Only Challenge, which basically means that we'll only be allowed to use the Crossbow, Stealth Kills, and Melee. Uh, I've heard online that some people also allow the use of grenades, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it pure as we can. So, um, normally I won't leave uh, the cutscenes in the videos, but for this first episode I'm going to leave them in so I can do a little elaborating on the series, and on the rules, and on different strategies, and that sort of thing. But I'm going to let this play out, and uh, I'll be back to you once we start. You think there's a connection? It's a possibility. I believe the records were sealed. Anyone on scene respond? Dispatch, this is Detective Castellanos in 184. What's the situation? Over. Now, if you haven't played the game, I would highly recommend to uh, play the game or at least watch a walkthrough of the game minus any challenges before you uh, go ahead and watch this. There are going to be spoilers. And um, in this scene, we'll see Sebastian and crew get sucked into the STEM system. And we're going to slowly drive through the city up to the point where we will actually gain control of Sebastian. Any thoughts? Nothing yet. I'm sure we'll know everything once we get there. As you'll see, this is where we finally gain control of Sebastian and we're going to make our way into the Beacon Mental Hospital. Um, the game's going to force us to walk really slowly for the next couple of scenes just to usher in the uh, cutscenes. But I'll have you know before we get started that this is the first video I've ever recorded on my PlayStation, this is the first video I've ever edited on my computer, and this is the first video I've ever narrated. So this is all virgin territory to me. and. Um, I hope you can appreciate that things might be kind of choppy, slow, the editing might be kind of bad, but I hope that you'll find the gameplay satisfying, and I hope that you'll find it informative, and I hope it'll help you if you decide to take on the same challenge. So here, we're going to come up to the door. And I apologize if you find this uh, gameplay just far like too slow or the cutscenes right. unbearable. Stay if that's sharp. the case, just look down in the description and you'll see some links to skip to different parts in the video where you'll Check see some actual don't content. Don't let anyone else through this door. I can be an extra set of eyes. We don't know what's happening here. You're a backup. Did you hear something? Someone alive in here. So here Sebastian and Joseph stumble on one of the main characters in the game, Dr. Jimenez, who's miraculously alive what despite there being mass slaughter around them and uh, the room being filled with blood and guts and gore. He's just sitting here and he's alright, he's mumbling, Joseph's going to get him and we're going to check the footage and we're about to be whisked away. If you've never seen this game before, or never played this game, you're about to find out that it's just fantastical and unbelievable um, in about two seconds. Yep, here we go. You're going to see how crazy and how unusual this game is, and at times how unbelievable. So here we are now. We're going to be waking up in the Sadist Lair, where he presumably cuts apart his victims. And uh, 
you'll be introduced to a boss character in the game, the Sadist, who's going to be right in front of us after we look at our feet. But anyway, we're going to, again, miraculously avoid him, even though he clearly sees that we're still alive. And if you can look on the right side of the screen, you'll see we'll be grabbing that knife and cutting ourselves down. Alright, so now that we're free, we're going to move forward and we're going to crouch so that we can't be seen by the sadist when you crouch in this game. Enemies can't see you when you're directly behind them. And when he goes into this back room here, we're going to grab the keys on this hook. And then we're going to turn around and make our way out, unlock the door, and head out of this little butcher's room. I forgot to mention that we're playing this on survival difficulty. I know this is possible on Nightmare, but I've only done one run through on Nightmare so far. And I want to be really solid at the game before I film my Nightmare walkthrough with the crossbow only. Just because it's a little more difficult, the enemies are a little more resilient, and it takes a little more practice. But that's to come in the future, and here we're getting spotted by the Sadist because Sebastian doesn't notice the obvious tripwire in front of him. And this whole part is scripted. All you have to do is hold forward on the joystick. So the status has locked us in this room instead of just killing us outright. And what we're going to do is we're going to head forward hobbling as quickly as we can over to this little trap door which will then open and you get to slide down a bloody chute and the only thing you have to do here is hold left you'll be going past these spike traps and then hold right and you'll be going past the second and then you'll land in a pool of blood from which you just climb the ladder out of And as you might notice, this level is pretty much just a walking simulator, so if you find that kind of redundant, then I recommend just skipping ahead to uh, chapter 2 or to further on in this chapter. But basically, we're just going to walk through these sewers very slowly. Uh, don't worry, Sebastian doesn't always walk this slowly. And uh, up here, you'll notice that there's a person in a wheelchair or a chair or whatever he's in, and there's going to be a file next to him that you can be prompted to pick up you're going to see that Where's I'm going to just walk past it and I'm not going to pick it up. If you do pick up all the files in the game, you can earn an achievement for that. But uh, this walkthrough assumes that you're not really interested in that and you're just interested in the combat and getting through the game with just the crossbow. So anyway, here we are at this ladder 
and we're just going to climb up it and you're going to need to really get used to this because this game is full of ladders ladders and elevators everywhere I think they're actually loading screens but I don't have any evidence to back that up it would just seem that way so we're going to climb up this ladder and uh, when we get to the top we'll continue on So as you can see, we're just going to continue through a series of doors and hallways. Uh, it's not too exciting, but we're eventually going to reach a room where we'll find our first hiding scenario. And in this situation, you will have to hide or else you'll be caught by the sadist. So when you get right up here, you'll want to go to the right and you'll enter into the locker. And in the locker, we're going to sit here for quite a while, almost about a minute and then we're going to get out. So the sadist is going to destroy everything in this room except for the locker and he's going to run away where we're going to exit. And you're going to notice that there's a little glitch in the footage. That's because I fucked up originally and got killed because I was on nightmare mode in my brain but not realizing I was actually on survival and I was using a different strategy. But anyway, in this strategy, just hobble over behind these crates here and you'll find a bottle, pick it up, aim it into this hallway and throw it against that wall. When you throw bottles in this game, it will distract the enemies. He's going to take a sec, but he's eventually going to chase over to where that bottle was thrown. And then we're going to continue on, hobbling up. Once the eye is gone, he's not actively looking for us. And don't go right here, just go left. And you have plenty of time to escape through the rest of this level without hiding or throwing any more bottles. So right here you're going to continue through these two doors and you're going to trigger a cutscene where the sadist figures out where you are and in this cutscene all you have to do is hold forward it's all scripted so you don't need to worry about that but this gives us a little more time to talk about the video because the rest of the chapter doesn't even involve your input and anyway we're going to trip over this table and we're going to continue into the elevator where like I said you're going to be in one of the many elevators in the game. Sadists can't get you, and you're free for now, and you don't have to worry about any more uh, running away from the sadist. But here we are. Sebastian is recovering, and he grabs something out of his pocket, which I presume is a pack of cigarettes, but you can't really tell. So here the game's theme song is going to play. It's a pretty cool theme song, and like I said, I think that sound is one of the better parts of this game. But anyway, to give you a little background info, I started playing The Evil Within in 2017, and I got it originally on Xbox 360. I was really late to the game, but I just got a PlayStation 4 a couple months ago, and I bought the game again on a sale and decided I was going to go ahead and get all the achievements again. So I got all the trophies on PlayStation, just finished Akumu, and I got my Platinum. And uh, I just kind of wanted another challenge to go for, and I was Googling different challenges, but if you are in interested in this game at all, then you know it's kind of a niche title, and that uh, there's not too much info on it out there, and there's not too much, too many different self-imposed challenges compared to, say, Resident Evil 4 or some of the other Resident Evil games. 
But anyway, I thought crossbow only would be a good challenge, and hopefully a no crossbow challenge comes in the future as well. It's hard to say which one will be harder, but I think the no crossbow would probably be harder. But anyway, I hope this video will help you. Here we are, we got out of the elevator, and Sebastian's leg is cured despite being cut deep by a chainsaw. And we're just going to escape this building into another cutscene. And luckily, the walking simulator is going to be mostly over for now. But just a little bit more info. Um, there are going to be different chapter select buttons in the description below the video. And you can just kind of skip about as you need to. Uh, some of the chapters are going to be far more difficult than others. Right off the top of my head, I can think of chapter 6 being kind of difficult with a with a kind of hard part in chapter 5 as well, but not terrible. And then um, chapter 11 will be difficult, and chapter 10 will be difficult. All the other game, uh, parts of the game are definitely going to be manageable using the prep strategies, so that's kind of why I made this video, just so that I can show you my particular strategies and hope that it might help you, and if anything, might entertain you if you don't actually want to go and do the challenge yourself. If you have played the game, you will know that you don't get the Agony Crossbow until about a third of the way through the third chapter, but that's okay because we have strategies to get us through the next chapter and the beginning of chapter three. So what we will do is focus primarily on stealth kills and match kills. That's gonna be the easiest way to get us through. And again, I do apologize if my voice sounds terrible. We've got two issues here. First of all, my voice naturally sounds terrible and nasally. Just, I don't have a good voice. I've got nasal problems, and I'm just kind of a dweeb. Second of all, I don't have any professional video recording software, and I don't have any professional audio recording software. All I've got is my uh, PlayStation 4 and whatever stock program comes on my MacBook. I don't have a microphone either. So, if the voice sounds terrible, I'm sorry about that, but uh, this isn't meant to be a high quality kind of thing. This is meant to uh, just be a bare bones walkthrough to demonstrate this specific challenge. from everyone everyone must be dead everyone all right back there Just so here you'll we'll see that we've escaped the city and things seem like they're in the clear but uh, officer Connolly will turn we'll into one of the haunted which if you don't know are the main enemies in the game and you'll find out that this character Leslie who's white with white hair and looks like a mental patient is uh, some kind of like savant or can predict the future because he's uh, more deeply integrated into the stem system than the other characters and he has a deeper connection to Rubik. So here's Connolly getting fucked up and we are at almost at the end of this video. It's just a little bit more cutscene to sit through. Again, thanks for bearing with me. But as you see, we're gonna fall and this is pretty much the end of the video and the end of the first chapter, and I will see you in the second chapter. Thanks again for watching, and please stick with me. I promise my recording capabilities will become much better in future videos.